Hey guys, welcome back to Maverick Watch Reviews. Today we're gonna to review the Swatch Irony Boxing Gas, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, 30 meter quartz chronograph, model number YVS423G. And as usual, we'll open it up, look at the fit and finish, the features and the functions, the build quality, and then I'll give you my overall impressions of this pretty nice chronograph from Swatch. But first, I'd also like to invite you to become a patron of mine on Patreon. This will allow me to bring you a new watch review at least a couple times a week, at least that's my goal. Make sure you check out my Patreon link in the description field when you get a chance. My only commitment level is $3 a month, which you can always give more or less. One, three, five, 10, 20, whatever you can spare a month would be greatly, greatly appreciated. So here you go. Now I've never reviewed a Swatch before. I don't really don't know why, but this watch is one of the watches I had that really started get me into watches. Uh, I bought one of these about 15 years ago. Not this exact model, but it was an irony chronograph and it looked a lot like this. It might've been the same model. I can't remember. That was a long time ago and I got rid of the watch a very, very long time ago. So anyway, so here you go with the swatch. It's kind of like an acrylic plastic um, watch box. Really neat. And you just pop it open. There you go. Actually the lid on this one's broken. No big deal. Take the watch out. And I think boxing gas means pit lane in German and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what boxing gas means or boxing gassy. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. Anyway, here you go. here's a watch. And down here you have all of your manuals and stuff. Let's look here. Looks like this one is the instruction manual. This one is the warranty for different countries as well. Looks like this is a little bit of marketing. Join the Swatch Club. And I think there's another one under here. Oh. Is that it? Oh, there you go. And this one, I guess maybe is where you register your watch, I believe. Yeah, I think this is possibly a registration, I think. I'm not sure. Anyway, so there you go. There's the boring stuff. Let's talk about this watch. Again, I bought this about, I'm saying 15, 16 years ago. There was a Swatch dealer um, in DC, um, and I can't remember the name of the mall where it was, but it was a Swatch dealer in DC. And I remember uh, Michael Douglas was shooting a movie, I think with Eva Longoria. I can't re remember the name of the movie, but I remember seeing them there shooting the movie. Uh, and I'll put the, uh, the title of that movie up on the left hand. Maybe I'll put a little poster on the left hand side of the screen for you. I can't remember the name of the movie, but anyway, I got this watch the same time they were shooting that. So 15, 16 years ago, something like that, I can't remember. Anyway, so let's take a look at this thing. Let's go ahead and get the rough measurements. Again, always refer to Swatch for your official measurements and refer to any manufacturer for the official measurements. I like just to kind of give you a quick rundown here of what, what we're looking at. So let's look at the case size. All right. Case size, you're looking at 43 millimeters. Let's see how thick it is. Looking at about 12 and a half millimeters thick. Let's go lug to lug. Lug to lug, you're looking at 48 millimeters. Let's look at the bracelet. This has got a pretty thick bracelet for a swatch. Yep, 21 millimeters for your bracelet. Again, refer to swatch for the exact measurements on this thing. Now on the left-hand side of the screen, I'll go ahead and put all the uh, other uh, specs for you. You're looking at 30 meters water resistant, which is basically 100 feet. Uh, it's got the ETA G10.211 movement. Of course, Swatch owns ETA, so of course Swatch is gonna use their own ETA movements. Uh, it's got about two or three year battery life. It really depends on how much you operate the chronograph on this thing. Uh, it does have a chronograph, like I just said. It has a date function down there at six. We'll talk a little bit about that later. It has a non-movable bezel. It does have also a non-screw down crown. You've got a sealed case, which is really interesting. And I'll show you that. You've got a sealed case right there, which is really cool. Um, it's also Swiss made, which is really, really neat. And you have uh, pushers over here at two o'clock and four o'clock for your chronograph functions. So again, this is one of the very, very first watches that got me into watches. I don't know why. I mean, I just bought this just because of the way it looked. I knew absolutely nothing about watches. And luckily I bought a pretty decent watch, not knowing anything about Swatch back then, uh, not knowing any of the history. I remember those big, huge wall mounted Swatch um, clocks that kids would buy in the eighties. 
and I'll put a picture of one of those up on the left-hand side of the screen for you. I mean, those things were like six feet tall. I just thought they were always really cool. I always wanted to get one, but for whatever reason, I never got one. You can still get them today, by the way. So again, I just like the look of it. Um, the chronograph, I'll never ever use a chronograph, but I like the way a chronograph function looks. It just looks cool. So let's talk about the actual watch. Let's talk about the dial. Of course, you have all your sub dials for the chronograph features. You do kind of have a sunburst uh, dial going there. You can see that right there. Kind of a dark blue. Um, really nice. I just like the way it catches the light. It's extremely easy to read. Very, very legible. You've got all your Arabic numerals there. Uh, you've got your minute hand and your hour hand. These are obviously, um, these are um, actually the only uh, thing on the dial that is loomed. Nothing else is loomed, just the hour and minute hand. And again, like I said, you have all your different sub dials for your uh, chronograph feature. And then down there at uh, six o'clock, you have your sub dial or your, actually your date window. And it's a little bit hard to see. I'm not going to lie. I wish they maybe put a bezel around it, like a white bezel or maybe raise the window a little bit closer to the surface of the dial. Uh, but I mean, it does it. You're going to have to look for a second to see what time it is, but it's not that big of a deal. Of course, you have all the different markings for the minutes and seconds and stuff. Uh, this is a non-movable bezel. This doesn't move at all. It's kind of flush with the case. It has a really nice feel to it. Really nice. Uh, again, you got your pushers. I wish these pushers had a little bit of knurling. If you were going to use a chronograph function, it'd be nice if these were knurled right here at the end on either side. Uh, the crown, uh, again, not a screw down crown. Uh, it's got a, I wish it had a different feel on it. It's a little bit easy to turn. Uh, and, and, and that's not necessarily a good thing. It's a little bit loose in my personal opinion. I wish it was a little bit tighter. Again, it's not a screw down crown. I'm not crazy about the shape of the crown itself. It just, it feels a little odd trying to turn it. I wish it was knurled or, or had that, uh, like that, that beveled edge, like a coin edge or something. It's just a little bit, a little bit loose and a little bit hard to kind of, I don't know, kind of grip. It's kind of weird to kind of grip it. Anyway, um, the rest of the case, just about every area is polished on this case. There are no, that I can find, really brushed areas anywhere on the watch. That includes the links. Um, and you have this kind of Jubilee-style bracelet. Really, really comfortable bracelet. I'm not a big Jubilee-style fan, but this one's kind of, uh, this one's kind of might be changing my mind a little bit. Really, really comfortable Jubilee bracelet. Really, really cool. What else? Um, it feels really, really solid. I mean, it's a stainless steel watch. It feels solidly built. Uh, and it feels like, you know, if you take care of it, it can last a really, really long time, which I like. Let's take a look at that. Um, let's take a look at the buckle here, the, the uh, bracelet. Of course, you got your uh, lock. You got your locking bracelet with a friction lock right there. Let me see if I can open it for you. It's a little bit harder than I thought. Let's see if I can get this thing open. Man, it is really hard to get open. There we go. Good grief. Anyway, so there you go. Just a stamped metal. Um, clasp right there. You're not going to get like a scissor clasp or anything like that. Stamped metal. Of course, you have a signed, I think you have a signed buckle. Yeah, you got a signed swatch buckle right there. Stamped metal. And if you look at the case back, it's a sealed case back other than the fact that there's the battery window right there. The battery door, I'm sorry. And all you do is you just take a nickel and turn that door counterclockwise and you, cha you, know, you can change out your battery. Now, I'm, I'm guessing that's probably a Renata battery seeing as it's a Swiss watch, they're probably using a Renata battery, I'm guessing. And I'm not going to open it up to show you, but that's just, just my guess. And of course, you have some uh, laser etching on the back here. Uh, looks like it says Swiss made stainless steel, water resistant, four jewels, and patented. So there you go. But it's a, it's a neat it's a neat case back because it's sealed. In order to get into the watch or change anything, you'd have to pop this bezel off and go through the top of the watch. Really interesting. For a, for a rather you know inexpensive watch to have a sealed case back like that, uh, it's pretty unique, pretty unique. So again, it's not meant to be super waterproof. It's only waterproof to, bless you, buddy. <laughs> it's only waterproof uh, to 100 feet. So this is definitely not a diver. So don't think you can go in the ocean, you know, do any diving with this. Uh, it's really a fashion watch, but a pretty good looking one and a very well-made fashion watch. I remember, you know, I liked it way back when, when I bought it. I don't remember what I did with the original one. I probably sold it or something and, you know, probably turned to a Seiko or something like that. But swatches have been around, at least for me, at least since the 80s. They've probably been around a little bit longer than that. But they make a really good product for the money. So that's why I got this one way back then. And I might even get another one. I'm not sure. They also have a couple different, you know, automatics. Swatch um, makes quartz watch. I'd say probably 99% of their watches 
or quartz watches, but they also do have a couple automatics. And they have one real famous automatic, uh, and I'll put it up on the left-hand side of the screen. It's a skeletonized automatic, and that's actually a pretty famous swatch uh, just for that skeleton movement and it being an automatic where most swatches are quartzes. So that's about it. Let's go ahead and give this thing a shot on the wrist here. And right out of the box, it's really comfortable. Man, that is really comfortable. I'm really starting to dig Jubilee bracelets, man. I've never owned a watch with a Jubilee bracelet. And this thing is really comfortable. I think it because it conforms better to your wrist than normal, than normal bracelets do. Really, really comfortable. All right, see if I can take this thing off. Again, this is really hard to get off. Ah, uh, there we go. Man, you can hear how loud it was when it popped. Let's go ahead and kill the studio light. Let's give you a loom shot. And again, only the hour and minute hand are loomed. So don't, you know, expect this to light up like a Seiko, like a Seiko monster or something. Let's give it a, I don't know, about another 10 seconds here. And uh, you'll see that the hour and minute hand will light up. And it's pretty decent loom. It doesn't last very long, but it's pretty decent. There you go. Not too bad, and that'll actually fade pretty quickly. And the funny thing is about the camera, the, pa the camera's showing that this loom is still active, but to the naked eye, it's almost all, all gone. So that, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm looking at it right here, and I see almost no loom, and the camera's still showing that it's glowing a little bit. So there you go. All right, there is your loom shot. And what else? Now, you can get one of these over at uh, Amazon. I think this particular one's about... I think they have two different ones. They have one for $128. Uh, that's what this one costs. And then they have one sold by another seller on Amazon for like uh, $169. So depending on where you get it on Amazon, depending you know, it depends on your price. Again, there are also just tons and tons of different colorways of this watch, different dial colors, different bezel colors. Um, there are just, uh, I would dare say, hundreds of different options. Again, this is in the Irony collection. This is the metal collection of, of uh, Swatch watches. Um, and I'm just, I've always liked these. Again, that boxing gas, I believe it stands for pit lane uh, in German. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, y'all. Put you know, your comments in the comment section. And if you like this watch, you know, go out, you know, go out there and get one. It's a really cool looking watch and it's well made for what you're getting. So that's really about it. A little blast from my past so far as watches goes. And uh, again, if you like this video, please click on like. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please do so. I would definitely, definitely appreciate it. Obviously, we've got some more stuff coming up here pretty soon, so stay tuned. And uh, this is really bringing back some good memories, man. I really remember this watch. I like it. All right, guys. Till the next review. Take care. Bye-bye.